today we will be building the Johnsbo Mod 4 and this is it right here this is what the end product looks like I'm pretty happy with the results I think it looks pretty cool the only difference here from what I built was that I decided to add a 120 millimeter liquid cooler and that's it that's the only part that I did not show but it really is pretty straightforward so let's get into it so here is the back panel of the Z170i Pro Gaming motherboard from ASUS and this is the motherboard it's an MITX motherboard this is the RAM that I will be installing 16 gigabytes total 3200 megahertz the brand is Neo Forza and it's an RGB RAM stick just make sure you install it properly make sure it clips down and is seated properly all right and now here I'm going to install the speaker now the speaker is important because it's going to help you troubleshoot whether or not something is wrong so I've quickly just installed a temporary power button just so I can test the board and the speaker so I can hear any errors next we're going to install the CPU fan push it down make sure it clips in put it in here push down and twist for all of them and that locks it in plug in our CPU fan plug that in now we'll plug everything in and make sure it all works it should beep once if it beeps more than once then that's cause for concern it's telling you that there's something else wrong or something missing there's one beep now that we know that it all works fine let's just shut it down and let's continue with the install now another thing is if you have any plastic still stuck onto any parts of your motherboard peel it off now because it's going to be a lot harder to take off later so now we can start to install it onto the case so this is the john's bow mod 4 and it's an open frame case another thing with this board it's a itx it is very small it even has a slot for your m2 drive so we're going to install an m2 drive in this as well so that our operating system can boot up much faster now you're comparing this drive which will give you about 550 read and uh, 500 write comparing it to something like this kingston m2 ssd drive which will give you speeds of up to 2000 read and 1900 write a very big boost in speed for your operating system and that's what you want it's amazing how much you can fit onto a itx board when I first looked at this, I was wondering to myself, where on earth is the M2 drive? Because I've never built on an ITX board before. And amazingly, it was on the back right here. It just goes to show how much they have utilized this board. As you can see, it has Wi-Fi. It has your standard PS keyboard. You've got your two standard USBs. Then you've got your USB 3. Then you've also got two USB 3.1s. It's very fast and it even has a audio output and it's amazing because the battery is actually just under here you see this little black thing here with the red, black and red cable that is the battery they've just simply stuck it underneath the wi-fi and i just think that is genius because this is an itx board so you only need these four mounts so we'll simply line this up it's going to start them off here with these and then finish it off with the electric drill so it's just a lot quicker now we just tighten everything down not too tight guys you don't want to be cracking the board just because you tighten the screw way too tight just enough so that it is snug next what we're going to do is install our fans before we put anything else in we're going to install the ones on the bottom because it's a lot easier to install the ones on the bottom when there's nothing in the pc case the top ones are going to be a lot easier because it's very accessible we want to ensure that our cables are easily routed where the fans are going to be what i'm going to do is tuck them through here and then have the cables routed out like that install our fans how we want them I want to line them up first and then I will tighten them all down. So we just get it started. Let's just tighten them in now. We can now install our 
power supply. Power supply is going to sit here. You have a bracket here that it mounts to. You simply mount your power supply to the bracket, four screws, and then it has these two tabs here that line up to these two tabs here. Then you have four screws that hold it in place. There we go. There's two at the front here. Put that in. And then you have two down here. You'll see two more holes where your screws go in to secure the power supply. Our power supply is nice and secure. Next, we're going to mount our hard drives. You have an SSD slot right here. You also have the two here, whether it be 3.5 inch or 2.5, you can install that on these plates right here. So now in order to remove these mounts for the hard drives, you have two screws under them. You just have to undo these, pull it out, undo the other one, and it will come straight off. Then you can simply mount your hard drive to it. In order to mount a 2.5 inch drive, line it up like that, and then we screw it in. And that will secure our 2.5 SSD to this mounting plate for the hard drive. If you were to install a uh, 3.5 incher, you have four holes here that line up with it. Okay, one, two, three, four. And then you have these four rubber mounts in order to help hold it up a bit. You simply line them up and that's how you mount a 3.5 inch drive. They just screw straight in. It's just a matter of mounting your hard drives the way you want. We just have to line up these two tabs. Now, if you wanted to mount it the other way, then obviously all you have to do is flip around your hard drive. We just have our mounting holes at the bottom here and we just simply screw it in. And nice and snug again, our 3.5 inch on the top. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to install the last SSD. You need to use the screw with the longer thread. That way it has room for it to mount. Push it on through and then just screw it in the SSD. Like so. Screw it down. Give that a quick snug tighten down. You can mount it any way you choose. I'm going to mount it this way. With the rubber grommet, there is a gap there. And that's what's going to slide into this smaller hole here. We simply push it on in like so and push down. And that's it. So now we just want to mount our power cables, our front panel cables and uh, finish it all off and then boot it up. What I've done with the front panel cables is I've just run it along here where all these holes are because that's where you're going to use your zip ties. So I have a USB 3.0 plug here. I have SATA cables here and I have my ATX here and then I've also got my front panel cables right here. So I know that I'm going to need my USB 3.0 here. So we'll plug that in here now. Put our ATX like this. As for our front panel cables, in this case, it's going to plug here. We could come just through here and plug it in like that. Our audio is going to plug here. What I'm going to do is tuck it in just in here like so, okay? And that's going to allow me to simply pull it on through a bit and plug it straight in. Rather than having the cable show here, we're just going to do it like this. That way it's a lot cleaner. And you know, there really is no science to cable management. The more you build PCs, the better you get at it. You can teach yourself the best way to manage your cables. If you're looking for a very small PC case, not something too big, you wanna build a very small PC, compact PC, an ITX board is definitely the way to go. Everything's in. Let's just plug it all in again and make sure that everything works before we go any further. I wanna use these red SATA cables because it just looks a lot light, nicer than just black ones. One, two. We will go to our hard drives. So as you can see here, we have our hard drive SSD plugged in. Now we have another SSD drive here. So we're gonna get the other SSD uh, cable and plug that in there. Now we're not going to install a graphics card just yet. We'll plug in our CPU cable. So we'll wrap that here like this and then we'll plug it in on this side. That's why it's also a good idea to install your fans later because you need all this room so you can access everything real easily. For our last SATA, and we'll plug that in here. That's how we're going to plug that SATA cable in there. And now to get this to the motherboard. Perfect. 
Like most motherboards, when it has an M2 drive, it's going to cancel one of your SATA ports. You can simply look at the manual and it will tell you. You can simply do trial and error. Plug it in one, see if it works. Plug it in the other, see if it works. We'll plug the power cable in now and see if it all goes to plan. That one beep is what we want. Booting. So here's my PC screen. I'm just gonna open up Specky to show you the specs. We have the i5-6600K at 3.5 gigahertz. Now, there is a problem here with the motherboard being over temperatured, but sometimes these can give false readings. So we'll reset it again and uh, let's just see what happens there. Now we're gonna reboot it and go into BIOS. It's gonna show us the temperature of the motherboard here. Okay, so as you can see here, the motherboard is only reading 21 degrees Celsius. So sometimes those software programs like Speccy, CPU-Z, etc. Sometimes they can give false readings. Not all the time, but sometimes. So just bear that in mind. And that brings us to the end of the test. We can put everything together and this PC will be done. Because I didn't have enough fans, I decided to swap out the fans for ones in which I had seven of because I'm going to put two at the bottom, three at the top and two here. The top three ones done. Now we're going to swap out the bottom ones. All we're going to do now is basically put two more here and we'll wire it all up. This is designed for water cooling. Instead of doing that, we're just gonna add two more fans here just to help circulate more air. I'll we'll take this off now and just install two more fans here. That will be seven fans for this PC case. Okay, beautiful. We'll put this back on. Let's plug them all in. We have everything else where we want it. Let's put everything else back together. Push it up. We'll do this side now. Line that up. Push it in. Nice and snug. There we go. Nice and snug now in. Okay, now I'll put the glass back. Get the other screws on, hold it in place. This is the Gigabyte 4 Gigabyte G1 Gaming graphics card. It is a really good graphics card for what it is. You think that 4 gigabytes isn't a lot, but you know, it really is all you need in order to play a lot of games these days. This definitely does the job. The good thing is, with a PC build like this, if you just want to play better games with better graphics, all you really need to do is to upgrade the graphics card. You will have a 
really powerful PC for all your gaming needs. But a PC like this can definitely do a lot of different tasks from just doing average work to gaming to video editing. This PC will definitely handle most of that. So let's just install this quickly. We already had the cable routed here. This is a six pin. There we go. We'll just tighten up our screw so it holds the graphics card in place. You can use two or one. It really is totally up to you what you decide to do. I'll just use one for now, but I will put two. All right, and then we plug that in and uh, that's it. We're good to go. That's how easy it is to install a graphics card. We replace our tempered glass. There we go. And we'll put our screws on. And we are done. Now we'll just give this a test run in Eugen Heaven. Bench it a little bit, see if it holds up and see what type of frames per second we're getting. And also we'll test out a couple of games like Call of Duty Warfare and also Destiny 2. So here's my PC screen. I'm just gonna open up Specky to show you the specs. I'm just running it on standard. Now we know that this temperature is wrong as I showed you guys earlier we have 16 gigabytes at 3200 megahertz now if you don't understand why this is at 1600 it's because it's a dual channel it's reading only one channel so obviously you multiply that by two and you get 3200 megahertz i5 6600k at 3.5 gigahertz I haven't overclocked anything obviously you can overclock higher but uh, we'll just leave it at that for now and let's just see how it stacks up okay and next we're going to run Unigen Heaven 4.0 just to get a an idea of the benchmark and from there we'll load up Call of Duty Warfare and also Destiny 2. So let's just open up Steam.
inside the building. Reloading! Enemy UAV guys the PC completely built so I am really happy with the way it turned out I think it looks great I mean obviously if you don't like LEDs you can always just switch out the LEDs and just put plain fans or if you're into that matte black or full black look then you can just simply use fans that are all black now personally for myself I don't mind a couple of LEDs as long as it's not overdone Now look, I never claim to be the best cable management person, so you know, bear with me, I am still learning how to build PCs, but I figured that this was probably the best way in order for me to route all my cables. Now obviously you can put your Wi-Fi antenna anywhere you want, I'm just leaving it here now. It does have a magnetic base as well. And yes, as I stated earlier, I did end up adding a liquid cooling CPU fan cooler just to help it cool down a little bit more. And as you can see, I just installed it there. You're able to install it underneath one of your fans. So as you can see, I have three fans at the top, but I added this into the center one because it was the best place to put it. It could not reach all the way to these two spots here for the 240 liquid cooling so i just decided to add it straight up there and i think it looks pretty good this is the end result and um i think it looks pretty good and i have to say once again that this gigabyte four gigabyte g1 gaming graphics card is very good and the best bang for your buck i got this for only 225 dollars now they do sell for about 200 to 300 depending on who you buy it from but honestly i wouldn't try to pay more than 250 dollars australian as you saw in the games that i just did it is a really good graphics card and it will handle most of your everyday needs from you know general computing to video editing gaming all that stuff if you're looking for a budget pc or you want to build a budget pc i would strongly recommend to stick in the 6th 7th gen cpus and motherboards and you will definitely have a pc that will do basically anything that you need it to do with that said yeah, that brings us to the end of the video i really hope you found this video helpful and if you did don't forget to like share comment subscribe ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads until next time this is mike with mikey's vlogs signing off I'll see you in the next one, guys.